Then, in the 10th century, there's a guy named Farabi. The Romans call him Farabius, or Al-Farabius, because the Arabs called him Al-Farabi. Farabi realized that he had a problem. He wanted to talk about everything and anything under the sun. He wanted no limits. He was a polymath. He wanted to talk about psychology and politics. He wanted to do astronomy. He, he wanted to do religion. He knew he was eventually going to step on somebody's toes and he was going to get it. So what he did was he, put, made, he wrote all the books he wanted to and then he put it in his will that when he died, they would get published. And so as a result, we don't really know as much about him because during his lifetime, he spent it as like a gardener. And what he would do is he would garden at the palace and he would listen to all the political conversations inside, pretending that he's tending to the roses or something. But in reality, he was writing it all down. He's going to ask really strange questions, questions that maybe not many folks had asked before. Al-Farabi asks a question, though, that throws everybody off. Because, so, if I say you're tolerant, that doesn't mean you love the other guy. We should be a tolerant society. That's a really low bar, right? Tolerant is, yeah, yeah, the world would be better if you weren't here, but I guess I'll tolerate you. That's not especially amazing when a person says, I'm tolerant of others. What I, what I think would be really amazing is if you said, I really love others. <laughs> That's a different level. And al Farabi asks that question, and he does it in a way that makes everybody uncomfortable. So the first two names of God, God has 99 days, 99 names, Rahman al-Rahim, the, the beneficent and the merciful. And it's pure mercy, it's not human mercy, right? Where you surrender to me and I'm like, I could kill you, but I guess I won't. Not that, it's pure mercy. The 50th name is Al-Haq, which means the truth. Al-Farabi asks the most annoying question ever. If God is beneficent and he's merciful, then why on earth are only 20% of the world's population Christians, Jews, and Muslims? Because in Islam, right, it's built in that Christians, Jews, and Muslims can get to heaven. In fact, they expanded it to include Zoroastrians. What about the other 80%? Did God set them up to fail? It's not their fault that they don't know about the three Abrahamic religions. So is God condemning them to all eternity in hell? This is why he couldn't publish while he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, I have no choice but to believe that God gave Hindus Hinduism, and God gave Zoroastrians Zoroastrianism, and God gave Buddhists Buddhism. But if God is Al-Haq, if he's the truth, he can't possibly have lied to them. Therefore, every religion must have access to heaven. Therefore, every religion should get equal respect. In fact, he went one step further and said, when you think about it then, the only way to truly know God would be to know every religion. He starts a whole movement. The Sufis. The Sufis go, oh wow, that's amazing. No bounds on what we can study. We can go learn yoga from India and bring it back. Al-Farabi wasn't just a polymath, he was a genius. And the way I can be certain in that statement was because of the following. So there's another Persian, his name is Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina uh, says to us that I read Aristotle 40 times. Now, he didn't read Aristotle 40 times, we actually don't know how many times he read him. I read Aristotle 40 times was an idiom. It meant I memorized Aristotle word for word. When he said I read Aristotle 40 times, what he meant was, you can tell me the politics, page five, third chapter, and he could tell it to you word for word. He had the text memorized in his head. 
He said, after saying this, I don't know what it says. I'm sure there's some incredible genius here. I can't tap into it. The words don't make sense. The reason the words didn't make sense was they were idiomatic. That is to say, Aristotle taught in idioms. Well, he taught in idioms that by the first century AD were now a thousand years old. And even the Greeks didn't know those idioms. So it wasn't like the Arabs could go to the Greeks and go, dude, what does this idiom mean? Because the language had evolved and those idioms were forgotten. So whether you read it in the original Greek or you read it in Al-Kindi's translation, either way, you still didn't know what the idioms meant. Nobody did. Even the Greeks couldn't read Aristotle. And so they're stumped. They don't know what to do. And Ibn Sinan goes, I know there's a genius in here. I got to tap into it. How do I tap into it? One day he's in the book, book section of the bazaar and he passes by a book and it says, uh, it's written by Farabi. It says, Al Farabi's idiomatic translation of Aristotle. Al Farabi would read an idiom, try to guess what it meant. He'd plug it in, see if it worked. If it didn't work, he'd come back, try a different one. And he kept doing this until he decoded the idioms. And he realized what each idiom meant. And now you could know Aristotle and what he was saying. Ibn Sina reads this, figures out what the idioms are. He already has the text memorized. Ibn Sina suddenly, instantly knows Aristotle. And he goes nuts. What he realizes is that Aristotle is on to something about the nature of the universe. Ibn Sina goes, those essences are actually information. In other words, there's a relationship between information and time. In other words, as time goes by, the universe increases the amount of information. And then he goes, oh, wow. What if we ran the clock backwards? So instead of us thinking about the future where there's more information, if we go back, there's less and less information. And he goes, okay, so at some point we reach a moment where there's the minimum amount of information necessary for the universe itself to unravel from that moment. He calls that point in time and that information packet necessary being. In other words, a thousand years ago, Ibn Sina described Big Bang and singularities and entropy. Also, that was not a major achievement for him. His real achievement was he's the guy who invented modern medicine. So if you look him up, it'll say the father of modern medicine.